If you're interested in creating high quality coloring pages that don't lose their quality when you zoom in and out and that you're able to edit and make changes to for free, then check out this video. Welcome back to another video and in this video I'll be showing you how to turn your colouring pages into SVGs. Now two reasons why you might want to turn your colouring page into an SVG is first for scalability and this just allows you to scale an image up or down without losing the quality and also easy editing as Midjourney doesn't always produce a perfect image and you might want to get rid of something. So the tool that we've been using to create the coloring pages is Midjourney, and you can see the rocket coloring page that I've created. And on the left hand side, you can see the downloaded version. And on the right hand side, you can see the SVG. I've made both of these files as PDFs, as this is the format you'd have to upload onto Amazon KDP. And if we take a look at the left hand side, the more we zoom into the image, the more it becomes pixelated and blurry. Whereas on the right hand side, no matter how much we zoom in it's able to keep its quality. Now the AI tool that I have been recommending is bigjpg.com which is an AI image enlarger and whilst that is still fantastic to use there is a price to it as well which is quite affordable. I also tried using various vectorizer AI websites however the file sizes were always way too large and even when I tried to use compressor tools they were still way too big to fit into Canva. The best solution I could find to this was actually using a free vector graphics editor called Inkscape. Now you're going to have to go to their website and actually download the software. So once the software has been downloaded, you're going to have quite a few options. Make sure you go to the time to draw and then load to upload your file and make sure you always choose smooth to optimize the quality of the image you're uploading. And then you, you can also click the do not ask again if you don't want to be doing that each time. It usually comes up a little bit smaller on my screen, but you can click on the left hand side to enter full screen. Then you've also got the option to zoom in the right hand bottom corner. And we want to make sure that we keep zooming in so that we can see all the details and there's also an option at the top of the screen as a box with a plus and that's just going to align everything into the center of the screen. Now if you click on the middle a few times you're going to get a few arrows in the corner and this is just going to allow you to increase or decrease the image size to a size that you're happy with but I'm fine with how it is at the moment. So to turn our image into a vector what we're going to need to do is go to the top look for path and then look for trace bitmap. Then we're going to see quite a few different options to the right hand side. What we're going to want to choose and make sure that it's on single scan, which is best for black and white images and multicolor if you've got various different colors on your image and make sure that we choose a brightness cutoff. And for any changes that we make, we're going to see them updated in the preview section, which is pretty cool. So if you want to increase the threshold, then more parts of the image become darker. And if you want to decrease the threshold, then more parts of the image becomes lighter. So it really does depend on the image, but for a simple color, page like this I usually like to leave it on about 0 0.8. Once you're happy with the threshold limit that you've chosen don't make any other changes to any other the details. We've had the live updates on so it's been updating the image as we go along and then just click apply and we now have our image copied as a vector. Now we're going to have to move our copied image to the side. So we have both images that we can see next to each other. And if you're unsure which is the copied vector image, all you need to do is click on one of the images, then go to the far left. And underneath the arrow, you've got an option to edit path by nodes. And if we click on the image on the page, we can see nothing happens. But if you click on the image on the far right, you can see that we've got a lot of little gray dots called handles. Now this is our vector image that we're going to be using. So what we can do is go back to the arrow above the edit nodes tool and just make sure that we delete the original image and then we can align the vector image to the center. You can zoom in a little bit more and know the image is not going to lose its quality as it's a vector and just make sure you take a look through the image and if there's any parts you don't like just such as this part here we can go back to the edit path by nodes and then hover over the area and double click then we're going to have all these gray handles come up again and if we zoom in we can highlight actually over the area that we want to get rid of and you'll see how it changes colors and you can see some blue and yellow undertones then you can click delete on your keypad or backspace 
and that part of the image is now gone. Now I've tried to keep this video quite basic and simple, but once you get a bit more advanced with this tool, you can use the pen tool or the pencil tool and, and actually start to manipulate and add your own details to the image. But like all tools, there is a bit of a learning curve, but don't be afraid to use it and make mistakes. Oftentimes it's the best way to learn. You can always undo any mistake on this software and I will have more videos that will teach you how to scale and rotate the handles so that you're able to manipulate parts of the image and create what you want. Now once you're finished you might want to zoom out and just check your image to make sure that you're happy with every single part of it. And once you are happy with everything, then you're going to want to find the file option, which is right at the top. And then you can just click that and then scroll down to export. And it's going to show us our options in the right hand bottom corner. So make sure that you choose the folder that you want to put your SVG file in. And then just make sure that we save it as a plain SVG and then click export. Now don't click this too many times as it will keep on exporting it, but it will be in the file that you requested it to be. So you just need to go look for it there. So then you can check all your files in the folder and you can see the sizes of the files. They're actually not too huge compared to all the other vectorizer tools that I use. The files were just way too large to upload into Canva. And you can see now that when I copy and paste them into Canva, there's no issue at all. And they all upload to Canva with absolutely no issues at all. You can use a compressor tool. In the instance, you do find your file might be a bit large, but once they've uploaded, then all you need to do is resize it so that it fits the A4 page. And the great thing about Canva is it has a lot of purple lines that will actually show you once an image is aligned to the center. So make sure that everything fits perfectly. You can zoom in and zoom out. And then you'll be able to see that with the purple lines in the middle that we finally got it aligned to the center. However, I felt that there's a bit too much white space. So again, you can just increase that size a little bit more and then zooming in, you can see that we've still maintained the quality of the image. It looks great. And once you've done that, then to download your images, click share, make sure it's a PDF print and then CMYK that's best for professional printing and click download. Again, you will have to do this quite a few times to fill a coloring book, but it is a great option for those that want scalable images and want to be able to edit their images as well. So if you have any comments, let me know in the comment section and thanks for watching another video.